food photography can be really fun to shoot, especially as generally you get to eat the subject afterwards. The challenging part can come when you're editing it, and this can largely come down to the purpose of the photo. Is it being used for social media? Is it being used for marketing? So understanding that purpose of the photo that you're gonna have will help you with your edit as well. Today, we're gonna look at editing this stack of pancakes that we have here, which yes, I did eat after I'd finished this. Now there's a nice kind of color scheme going on here off the brand of the pancakes with a vintage layout that I used in the background as well. Initially, you can see that I used these gray with a little bit of a blue tint to them, uh, napkins. And this was something I really wanted to bring out in the edit and gave me the idea to follow more down this blue route that we had to hear. But we still have some strawberries that we want to make pop as well, as well as this spoon that is leaking the honey down onto it. Large amount of the food photography is making it look irresistible. If you achieve that, then you've done your job. So that means making things vibrant, making them pop, making them quite contrasted as well. So let's hit the reset button on this and have a go through and look at how we can achieve this style. So the raw photo that you can see here is quite dark and this is really common when you're shooting the dark photography. Even though it had a focus light and a reflector on the other side, it's still quite dark. And that's because when I shot this, I wasn't using any speed lights or anything like that. I was just simply using a fixed light. So first of all, we wanna make sure we brighten that up and then we can have a look at how we can achieve that nice blue tone over the top of all of this. Remember that we still want to keep those reds popping in the strawberries and we want to get a little bit of highlights accented out on this side. So in my basic edit panel first, the shadows raising quite aggressively on this is really going to help just bring in some of that around the side here. But I'm going to combat that as well by bringing the blacks down. I'm going to move our highlights down slightly and bring our whites up. So just comparing the before and after that you see on that there, see it's brightened up the image slightly. It's also brought a little bit of contrast into this too. I generally tend to boost the clarity in food photography for those like sort of sharper angles that we get in there. But there are some instances where you might not want to do that. Uh, if it's drinks that you shoot, you may not want to do it. If it's uh, light and airy style, so very, very soft, like white backgrounds. Again, you might not want to do it here, for, but for the dark photography style, I find increasing the clarity really helps. Same with bringing in a slight bit of dehaze. And if you want, you can bring in a slight bit of texture as well. Really helps just to sharpen it all up. I'm gonna leave the saturation alone and handle the colors later on, but I will just bring up the vibrancy slightly. So that looks like a good starting point for us and it's already recovered some nice colors nice little bit of shine down the side here as well. So we see some of that shine coming in from bringing up the whites in on the strawberries. So let's go down to our tone curve then. I'm going to start with my three points, but I'm actually going to go a slightly different way and invert this and just bring a bit more light into these shadow areas and with the mid-tones there as well. And you dip that a little bit. And I'm not going to fade anything here. I'm going to keep them quite true. Now it's a little bit too bright now, but I'm actually just going to shuffle back up here. Just dip it down slightly and bring in a bit of contrast globally. Again, I'm just trying to bring light in at the minute. I'm going to use my vignettes and stuff to darken around the outsides a bit later on, but that's looking nice. Now's a good time to say if you do like this preset and you want to grab some similar ones to it, you can get the free pack on my website, link down below. Down into the color mixes then. So we've said blue is going to be something we want to try and bring out of here. We want to be careful not to make it uh, sort of purple tints that's coming out. And we've got our oranges and we have our reds in the strawberry we want to accent as well. We can do a little bit of masking on this orange if we don't want to put the lumens too much so we can focus on that locally later on. So first of all then let's actually just pull the greens to this side and the only green bit that we have really is just the tops of the strawberries but I want them to be a bit more of a true green and the oranges will just burn a little bit more as well as the yellows as well. I find when doing this the colors are generally already there in what you've captured if you've lit this properly and you've taken the photo well. So you shouldn't have to do too much work in the color mixer. You might want to do more with the color grading, but largely your colors are there. You just might want to consolidate them slightly and push these hues to other sides. I'm going to leave all these channels alone at the moment because there's not a great deal of that color going in on here. See, as I pull it up and down, it's only that slight hint in the background. It's barely anything. So moving down further then, let's actually boost the saturation up on our warm colors. And you can see in doing that, we've really made the strawberries become a bit brighter, 
made the pancakes themselves become and feel more accented too. A lot of the time when you see these types of photos in marketing, they might be on big poster billboards and they are very, very vibrant. Even though they've got a dark style to them, they're very vibrant colors because these strawberries have to look like you can just reach out and eat them. So in that sense, we are going to also bring up the luminosity of that red channel as well. And likewise with the oranges for those pancakes you see there, it's gonna help bring a bit more of those highlights in and in the background too. So I've just backed up slightly on them because they came a little bit too bright, but that's looking like a nicer level now. Let's do a quick before and after, just turn that bit on and off. And see, even though we've gone quite aggressive, it's just making those colors pop slightly more. Don't feel the need to do any calibration here because again, I'm quite happy with how the colors have come out, but I do want to bring in a little bit of color grading. So we want to get that nice blue look coming out over the cloth. And you can see as we go around here, we can find the hue that we want for the cloth that looks about good there and then i'm just going to back up slightly on it highlights are just going to bring in a little bit more warmth because i'm thinking about this area here as it's hitting on these brighter points so once again just going to find the hue warm hue that i like on that and just back it up a bit don't need any mid-tones and we're just going to pull that blend into full so let's look at that before and after there so you can see now we've got that nice blue wash just coming over which really helps the background that this is all sitting on with the greys, it just cools it all down a bit more, cools the whole image down slightly as well, but we've still got those lovely oranges in there. Now you may not want that, you may want to keep that off, but I just like the effect that it's having in this place. We'll bring up our sharpening slightly, just to tackle it a bit more. Obviously these two ones we want to turn on and I'm going to apply a little bit of lens blur to this as well. Just to blur out this wooden background a bit more. I want my focus to be more down onto here. So I'm going to add that lens blur in slightly, just crease it a bit more. There we go, that's nicer there. So I've got my focus being more on the pancakes in the middle. There, that's looking good on it. So I'm just going to come back up to the top here, lay off the highlights a bit more add a slight touch more contrast globally just doing really some final tweaks on that so that's looking nice to me it's really achieved what i wanted it to i've got the blue wash over it it's popping out the oranges quite well we've got these strawberries that are popping out too so the last thing for a bit of masking you can see we had our focus light coming across on this side so i'm going to come with a, a linear down from here just to decrease a bit more i'm going to add another linear gradient from this side as well uh, and this wants just to boost the exposure a little bit. Going back on myself, I think I'm actually now going to put the vignette in just down here and just make a nice sort of dark and moody one. And really focus in on that area that we've got, which is quite nice. In doing that, I feel like I want to back off a little bit of the black slightly there. Just looking at this area looking good and then of course i want to take a brush and really just bring out some more of these areas so we'll raise our shadows just to enhance the areas and our whites a little bit take a wider brush and i'm just going to paint over where we've got this bit of honey here and then just sort of highlight around the tops of the strawberries there take a little bit of wider brush and it's really just where that light is hitting just to accent it out quick before and after we're also just going to boost the saturation slightly on here so not too much masking going on but i think that vignette has actually really helped us on this looking at the before and after here now if we wanted to bring a little bit more of that blue in we can simply come down to the color grade in here we can increase how much of that blue we want to bring in over the top and that's really your personal choice there but for today we will leave it with this image that we've got because i think it's, it's quite a nice edit serves its purpose either for social media could do a bit of marketing with this but there's not too much like negative space to put text and things on but it might make a nice website image as well so just recapping a lot of that when you're really thinking about editing the food photography you need to know that purpose in mind is where is it going to end up going and that can actually influence your editing style slightly if you like this preset you can grab it for free down in my website where you can find loads of other presets as well of all of my different styles and particularly the edits that i show on this channel otherwise like and subscribe and i'll see you in the next one